you see the video, everyone's seen the video at this point. Do you regret anything that happened that night? Absolutely. Um, you know, immediately recognizing there's discredit to my service to her um, in the situation. Um, I got so much focused on what I observed then at the time was an issue. Uh, the, we had a junior deputy who had just started out. She was just released on her own, Deputy Pereira. Uh, and uh, she had already made contact with, with, uh, with uh, Miss Leal. And she broke contact, and that's, that's a no-no. You do the best you can to keep them out, whether it's talking them down, whether it's doing what you need to do. Um, I got focused on that, and my train of thought was that, and now I need to get her back out of the house because we don't know what's inside. It, the inside is the unknown, and that was what my focus was on at that point. You, um, I mean, the video shows, you know, when you walk up on scene, uh, the, the, they knock on the door, she comes back out, and what went through your mind when she walked back out that door? Was it to get inside to search? For a search of persons, a security check, yes, because she wasn't the one that called. Uh, her family member, whether it was a cousin or a sister, I can't remember, called at this point. Uh, I didn't know if she was still inside because they had broke contact at some point with her with dispatch. Um, so I knew that she was probably going to be inside. I responded to hundreds of calls uh, in different areas, and uh, nine times out of ten, there's usually going to be someone else there, if not a next-door neighbor, uh, upstairs, downstairs. There's somebody who, if, they, if they've taken the time to call a third-party caller, they're going to stick around and be within the vicinity. Uh, her cousin, or excuse me, or her family member, maybe. Uh, the family member was... Uh, still in there, of course, going through the, the deal after the fact, that, and that's where we were uh, going back and forth, and that's when she popped out, and of course, that's confirmation that, yes, she was inside. And you thought the suspect was still inside? Correct. I had a, a keen belief. I had never been there before to that residence uh, uh, or ever had contact with either or any of the subjects that we dealt with that evening. Um, the uh, information that was being relayed to us uh, through dispatch, over the radio, uh, through MDT, as we're going along, um, the boyfriend had a prior assault of history with her. Um, there was a warrant for him, um, and uh, it was all assaultive uh, stuff in regards to her contact with him, her contact, uh, or her, his contact with her, really. And so these are just things, are just little red flags going up, and at this point now, with the, the just all that, it, my focus was, we need to make sure that he's not in there. Well, you see in that video, when you move toward the door, you put your hand on her. What was going through your mind when you decided to, to so, put, put your hand on her? Right, so my, my intent was at the point, let's get her separated, let's get, get her to continue to keep on talking with a female deputy whom she already established uh, contact with. Um, you know, looking back after the fact, well, you know, one of my things that I could have done, which we, we, we we see training on, we get more training, training, training on, because that is obviously a topic that's something that they, that the public wants in policing nowadays, to de-escalate more, to de-escalate and do what we can. She was at a pretty uh, even tone at that point. There, she had not elevated her voice by any means. There was no confrontation. Um, so I felt that it was going to be passed enough to the point where I could just basically get her off to the side so I can start making contact at the door, doing call-outs to see if anybody else was in there. And uh, it, was an, it was an immediate response as soon as I went like this again uh, to get to her, to kind of get her this way. Uh, she was quick and she held on for dear life on the, on the uh, door handle. She wasn't fighting us. Uh, she was just trying to make sure that we were not going to get entry to, to, to the, uh, to the uh, to apartment. Now she's eventually taken to the ground. Right. She's yelling. You all are shouting commands at her. Right. Uh, you know, the, the video in and of itself sounds bad, it looks does. bad. It I mean, does. it's a domestic violence victim calling for help. She ends up on the ground under deputies and in handcuffs. You know how this video looks to the public. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, it, and, it, it, and I don't want to take anything away from that. It does sound bad. Um, it's in a closed-in foyer. It's all cement. It's an apartment complex uh, closed-in foyer area. Um, and it was loud. And granted, yes, she was screaming, yes. Um, um, there was uh, a mix of, still I believe that there was a mix of uh, an alert that he may have been inside um, and then more so just an alert to just to buzz off, excuse me, um, uh, or she just didn't want anything to happen as far as us going inside. Did at any point during that call when you walked up, did you ever lose your cool? Did you ever 
cross the line where you knew, you know, I should not be doing this right now? My professionalism, um, yes. It, uh, it went out the window. And again, my focus was on that deputy. I stayed stuck on that for whatever reason. I don't know why um, I stayed stuck on that. I was upset in the moment that she broke that contact. And then immediately when uh, the victim responded in the manner that she did, of course, you know, how she perceives me coming at her to move her away and I'm invading her space. Um, yes, she's going to react that way. And uh, um, I forgot where we're going with that. Oh, what was the question? Oh, just that, that did you ever in, in your mind think to yourself that, man, I may be crossing a yes. line? Right. So, and again, my my first, excuse me, my, my professionalism went out the window, uh, just uh, with uh, the contact from the deputy that uh, that initially made the initial contact with her, and uh, and I, I could have, uh, we probably could have stayed back a bit and let the female deputy talk a little bit more, but uh, I felt that there was an urgency uh, to get inside based off everything was going. Now that we had her inside, but now the other thing is that we have, we possibly have somebody else inside, which would that been the caller, and that was of course known after the fact. Um, that uh, was we proceeded through the call the um, you know it's you, I mean, you watched today there was a press conference where the sheriff made allegations against you said that you were part of a rogue group of deputies uh, with the former sheriff's office um, that you were not disciplined enough and uh, so, so you hear all this but did, did you believe in the moment that night that anything that you were doing was criminal? No, no. My, I did not have any malicious intent to hurt her. She's already been victimized. She's already been through a lot. Um, her neighbor even added to, um, y'all don't put her through this. And I was just pointing after the fact when she was already in the handcuffs. Don't put her through this, she's already been through enough. So he's seen it too. So there's obviously a history of violence. Like I said, I'd never been there before. Um, and for him to say that, it was just, you know, it was, it was just one of those those things after the fact that you, you read into it uh, as far as the information goes uh, in regards to the, the history of the continuous of the domestic situations. So. You know, you, uh, I guess you took an extraordinary step today. I mean, you, you decided to pick up the phone and give us a call. What led you to decide to sit down and talk about this? Initially, um, you've reached out to me before. Then I was employed and I was under a policy that I couldn't uh, freely uh, reach out to you and uh, I was worried about uh, losing my job uh, things were at a political climax then at the point where I felt that uh, it probably would have taken a turn for uh, a, a turn for the worse for me then uh, granted but here I am now I've already gone through the process that I have gone through and rightfully so you know and, and, there, and there's nothing wrong with it it's accountability um, and uh, just like Sheriff Gleason said and, and the district attorney Sean Dick said the same thing too and it's accountability following through with what they felt that needed to be addressed um, so that's why you know, uh, today happened, or this morning happened, as it did. You, uh, you, it, I mean, there, there's obviously a, you know, a misdemeanor A in Texas. Um, that's grounds for a license revocation. Yes, sir. At this point, do you plan to fight this, to plea? I mean, what is your plans for your future in law enforcement? It's not so much fighting it. It's it's going through the process as as uh, anyone else would have. Uh, granted, in regards to the offense, uh, there's due process there, but in regards to the license, it's going to be up to the public. Um, it's going to be up to TCO. Um, it's going to be up to the TMPA representation that I have to see if they're going to continue to uh, find it worth for me to continue in, in law enforcement. And I, I leave that up to them. Um, I've dedicated um, the first half of my adult life in, in law enforcement, um, and I initially wanted to be at uh, Williamson County. And uh, years ago, I got to where I wanted to be, and I. I I understand why I'm here now or how things have ended up and uh, I'm not trying to take away anything that I've done to put myself in a situation because I could have done better by all means um, but uh, I, I would like to continue if I would be allowed to but that's not up to me that is out of my hands the um, the, the I mean the you know the charge listed is assault and yes. official oppression Correct. do you sitting here today feel as though you committed any assault on this victim no. or official pressure. No, so that was not my intent. I was not there unlawfully. I was there on a call for service for someone who had been in a circumstance of being uh, in a strangulation um, by a, with information of, of a known uh, boyfriend or an, uh, I would say relation, someone that she was in a relationship with. Um, everything else, the information I got beforehand before I got there, you, it gets the wheels turning, red flags start going up of what the urgency is to take care of things. Now. Even folks there here uh, then 
at the time when the, the incident occurred and now disagree with it. You got some people in and some people out and everybody's going to have you know what they call the Monday night quarterback in law enforcement. Everybody's, everybody's going to have something to say. I think you could have done this better. Now, granted, the, again, not taking away that my professionalism, I felt there by all means. Um, uh, I could have done better there. I could have held back. I could have let things de-escalate. I could have let Deputy Perra do her thing and try to reestablish that relationship. But in my mind, I'm thinking uh, I got to get in there because I got to make sure that the other party is safe. And one, if he's in there, we need to get him out because he's got a warrant. Because if we leave and we're not able to get him in custody or uh, take care of this, the likelihood of her being in danger is, is, is probable. It's, it's going to be high. Uh, and again, that's based off my, uh, my training experience and going through the stuff that I've dealt with and not here within Williamson County, but in previous agencies that I've worked for. Dem different demographics that things happen like that. And, uh, and I, I was just going off of experiencing at the time and things that I've dealt with as far as domestic situations. Again, out of the hundreds and hundreds of calls that I've, I've responded to over the years. What did you think when you got the call yesterday from Williamson County that we've got warrants? Hard drop. Hard drop. Um, <laughs> no good cop. No good cop likes a bad cop. <clears throat> I have always operated on a direct form of communication so I effectively communicate what it is that I'm trying to do especially when I recognize something that needs to be taken care of yeah. I have regrets on how I could have taken care of that I have regrets still. I think sounds like this crushed you, man. I've worked hard in my career, but I believe it to be my law enforcement career. It's always do the right thing. Things like this domestic that I dealt with, I've dealt with previously. I grew up in an abusive household. I witnessed my mother be beaten and I always take that with me. I always had that with me. I always felt that I always needed to do more. Sometimes you can't do more because the victim won't allow you to. They don't want you to. They're fearful what happens when you leave, what happens after the fact, because what we do there in that moment is temporary. Even though, yes, we're stopping that situation, we're resolving what is going on there. It's temporary. They have to go back to that world we don't. And we may have to in, in another, for another call of service, and it continues. And I got to the point where if I dealt with something, I recognized that something needed to be taken care of. I did it so that they know the next time that I came around that things were going to be handled. Things were going to be fully addressed, not just pushed off to the side. Or, oh, the cops don't do anything. The cops don't care. Um, you know, and, and here, uh, disservice to her, I still, I still gave her that perception. You know, one of her statements on there that I recall and, and will stay with me is uh, oh, I know who you Williamson County guys are. I've never had contact with her. So that just tells you the context that she's had previously before. And again, I don't know how long she's been living here. Um, and I would imagine it would go uh, um, before the prior administration as well too, for her to say something like that. You know, Williamson County had a reputation. You know, the, uh, one of the biggest sayings was always uh, uh, come on vacation, leave on probation, that type of deal. Um, and 
any truth to that? From my perspective, as far as sternness, dealing with things, I, I believe so. And anything that ever came about to where uh, something needed to be addressed, it was gonna be taken care of, it was gonna be taken lightly. You, know, you deal here in this area, Cedar Park, Austin, uh, some of Travis County, uh, you know, the officers and the deputies you deal with you encounter sometimes. Uh, a lot of times they see the car show up and they're like, dang, Wilmington County's here. All right, we'll attack right. And you see the guys they're dealing with change their tone. The, the officers, the deputies will come up to you and tell you, hey, man, thanks for just showing up. Just Can you just wait there a little bit until things work out and until we take care of what we need to? And that's the reputation that has that, that has rolled along. And that's how I see it in, in, that, in that perspective in regards to taking care of things. Uh, but uh, to getting back to uh, the whole deal, it... it it's uh, it, it it's it's affecting me because um, here in the lack of my professionalism and not keeping focus on what needed to be handled the right way, I've I've failed my family, I failed myself, uh, I've I've tarnished the, the badge even further in regards to perception, public's perception of law enforcement in general. Not here in Williamson County, not here in just Central Texas, not in Texas, on a national level. With everything that's going on right now, that I really need to be part of this. Could I have taken care of this? Could I have prevented this? Yes, absolutely. And that's, uh, I've discussed it before, I, I take full accountability for it. Uh, but in regards to the, the whole unlawful aspect of it, it was my intent and that going with malicious means to go and assault her and victimize her further and put her in a predicament to where um, she was going to have to go through a horror ordeal. No, that was never my intent. I think another thing that caught me by surprise is just her reaction to us, or me, I won't say us, to me, in regards to when I was, my notion was to just get her to prayer to deal with on that end and when I made contact uh, with the door or was going to make contact with the door they just there was I at that point there was no recovery um, and in the moment you, you try to stay stern and start try, try to stay uh, focused on what needed to go and you know it needs to be uh, how it needs to go and what needs to happen taken care of and I just I fell apart and all the way through and uh and my professionalism was, was done all the way through as well too. You know, I, I know Deputy Pereira had some words for her that opened her up for some questions that I shouldn't have finished and that, that I did. I think she uh, was asking why this was happening. And then that's towards the end of the segment there of, uh, the con of our contact with her. And I followed up with uh, what, what happened out there didn't need to happen when you do what you did. Um, uh, that's gonna happen. And I could have put it better, but I probably would have relayed the same information, but in a better manner. But even then, I mean, I already lost her. I lost her. I lost her confidence in my service to her. Um, that's something that I, I can't get back, and uh, I will carry with me, and regardless of whether uh, I'm allowed to turn to return to law enforcement or not. Uh, it's just something that I have to accept, and something that I do. You know, that's the thing too. Is um, you know, your your profession, like mine, is built 100% on trust and credibility. That video is out there you will forever be tied professionally to that video. Yes. Do you think that if you are allowed to continue on in law enforcement, can you be trusted to do the right thing from now on? Absolutely. It's, it's gonna take some time. Uh, it may not be here in Williamson County. It, it may not be anywhere close to Williamson County. Uh, like I said, I, 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 failed, I failed the community. Uh, Williamson County here are very vocal. They'll let you know when they don't like something. Um, and uh, I've always appreciated that. Um, Williamson County always had our backs with anything and everything we did. Uh, there may have been uh, a lot of folks, and they were lot, they were very quick to tell you that they didn't like the uh, prior administration. You're all right, though, and that's that's something to go along with, right? Because we're not all we're not all we're not all the same, and uh, you know, um, and that's you know that's one of those things that it's going to just be up to the public to if that's what uh, ends up happening, and if it was the ultimate determination for the public to allow me to come back, then I. That'd be the greatest. That would, uh, I'd be grateful for that um, because that is what I've dedicated my life to in law enforcement and, and provided for my family as well too. Um, I me I messed up. I made a mistake. Uh, not by any means that I ever tried to get to the point that I thought this was going to go away. The Rangers investigated it, uh, and that's the pinnacle of law enforcement, Texas Rangers. And once they addressed it, I'm like, okay, okay, well here we go. Then, and I, I have no reservations there. I spoke with them. We we did what we did there. And, and uh, I didn't hear anything for several several months, and I inquired before uh, the new administration took off, uh, took office as well too. And I inquired, and even directly the DA's office, and the DA said, "Hey, just 
No, not right now. We don't, we don't have any information for you, and which is fine because they did. If, if they didn't, they didn't. I mean, that's not my place. You usually, get an attorney for that, but I'm trying to. If what happened when I got the call yesterday and what had to happen today, I had received that. Then, I would have taken care of it in the same manner. It would have been no different. I'm not hiding from anything. When uh, Detective Boatwright called me yesterday, yeah, my heart dropped. Saying my world. It, you know, I've been unemployed since then. I, uh, no agency has wanted to uh, even really look at me w with reason, and I understand. Um, but it, it just got even worse. And but, um, yes, sir. Well, what do I need to do? Where do I need to go? And just like Sheriff Gleason said, there was no uh, there was no special treatment. I did any I did everything that uh, any other uh, individual charged with an offense had to go through. There was no there was nothing in the process to the point where oh you you can. We're gonna just do this. Or, no, I went through a little process. Um, even in my the uh, booking paperwork that you receive, I uh, just got a glance at my booking photo. I'm like, wow. It you don't really see it. It's, it's not so much the mirror, but just seeing something, um, your name, state of Texas against you, and then to see my booking photo on there in the state that I was in at that time. And I, I think even in the booking photo, it references um, where I was at that time. Um, in as far as the accountability part, I mean, I don't know what what more there that, that you need as far as confirmation. It, I knew it, it it was there, and I just I, I broke down there as well. But other than that, I mean, uh, the uh, uh, just like a. Uh, uh, District Attorney Sean Dick said that uh, you know, they just want to go through the accountability portion of it for something that they weren't able to address and they're addressing it now. Um, so that was, the, I guess, the delay. Otherwise, we would have taken care of it then. And um, I, I resigned from the sheriff's office um, because uh, indirectly and figuratively speaking, I saw, I felt like I saw the writing on the walls uh, when I was initially brought in by one of the uh, CID lieutenants. Um, they said, hey, look, um, um, we're going to put you out of your position because we're bringing someone with more, someone with more experience. That's fine. I get that part um, because I was only a year in uh, on that on the, the investigation side. And uh, he says, uh, I don't know where where you'll end up, but uh, just go ahead and you're probably end up on patrol. Just go get a go get a unit, and then uh, we'll go we'll go from there and we'll wait for your basically your orders. And yes, sir. So no fuss, nothing. I understood. Um, I was just. Thinking then at the time I was lucky to be able to, thinking I was going to be able to keep my job. Um, I didn't get any notification that they were going to do otherwise. Um, and uh, I went to go get the, my unit and people that I would normally call and send emails to to confirm things weren't responding to me. And um, I'm just like, well, it just started dwelling me. A couple hours later, still nothing. Finally, my last supervisor referenced, hey, just go home. Uh, next week, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll uh, figure out where you need to be. And I'm okay. Just and then over the weekend, I just I, I couldn't I, I couldn't uh, I couldn't let it go. And I just finally said, well, it's evident that because they believed I was uh, was affiliated with the Trojan administration, that I was one of his guys. Um, the, anybody that was with the Light PD show, they just want to get it out. And I understood. That's why I left. Um, I felt that the uh, Rangers had already done what they did. There was nothing that had continued to come up uh, that was that was current with the. Uh, uh, well, after their investigation, and I inquired myself, um, and um, so I'm like, well, I guess it's time for me to go, and maybe I'll find a home somewhere else quick, quickly, and go from there. Um, and um, I get my F5, my license uh, status, and it's on the general discharge. And so, um, you know, we're, if they had that, if I was informed then, then I wouldn't have left because I know I would have known that I was under investigation, and I would have remained. If I would have known, and I, or I, or I watched a little bit of the conference, uh, if I would have known that they were going to provide me the opportunity to stay while all the legal stuff went through, then I would have stayed. But no one ever told me anything. No one ever communicated with me, and uh, so that's why that's why I resigned. When, when did you resign? I resigned uh, one three or one five. Right at the beginning of the year. Oh, so you were okay with the new administration? I got you. Okay, you um. So I guess that is, I guess to wrap this up, it is. 
at that press conference today, I mean, there was a clear tie that the sheriff drew a clear line between you and Robert Chody, you live PD, you and the scrutiny that has come down on the sheriff's office. There's also the discussion about the Wilco Badass Award. Were you ever offered gift cards or offered appearances on live PD no, to abuse people? No, sir. Absolutely not. I will reference the, the gift card thing came through. Uh, where the gift card came through and the knowledge that I have of it and I, what I recall, you know, what I was informed of is that if we caught a burglar in progress, a burglar in progress, and we got them in custody for a burglary in progress, then at that point we would get rewarded, we possibly get rewarded with something. And uh, that was the only thing that I have recollection that I have off of a gift card. I never had any affiliation with that. I never received anything. I was never informed of that. Uh, so, no. no. Was the Wilco badass something you all joked about internally? That was something that was said amongst a lot of the SWAT guys and uh, and uh, any of, uh, I guess, the ones that were closer to the Live PD stuff. Um, the whole Live PD uh, reference is, you know, it's funny that I was never really given the opportunity to be like a primary or, uh, 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 um, I guess, the, one of the main ones um, because they said I was, I was not fitting for, for camera. I was basically over, too too heavy for camera. And uh, which I thought it was funny because when I got to the point where I did that first night of the live PD back when I, I had uh, uh, contact with a uh, drunk elderly, uh, elderly female, that one was aired. And in my mind, I should have stopped then as I grew up watching cops. It's like, oh, that's cool. And then this came and I'm like, well, let's, let's, let's do it. And uh, went through it and got through it. I felt bad for the lady and we got her taken care of. We helped her up. That's that's me, and uh, in yes, dealing with DWI investigations is something that was always close to my heart that I was always pay extra attention to, and and really be thorough about it. Um, you know, I I didn't take that out of her in a personal effect. You know, it's just it's one of those things that um, that if I could take that back, I probably would have only done that one and that one only. But even then, at that point, there was no one on shift that was wanting to do it anymore. And when I said I didn't want to do it anymore, they're like, well, you're the only one with here with experience. Let's just keep them riding out with you. And uh, I think I had maybe three or four more contacts after that that were not a live, per se, live PD, live, live uh, uh, segment, but they were a uh, off segment, it says previously recorded or something of that effect. And uh, I had maybe uh, three or four of those. Um, and. Uh, that's uh, that, that was my involvement with life, but if I could take that back, I, I probably would have only done that one and stepped away and really put my foot down and said, no, I don't want to do it. As much of a highlight that it that could have been uh, for law enforcement and could have been for uh, uh, everything in general, it, it was it ended up turning into a shamble. And, you know, now, you know, it's like the sheriff Gleason said it, it was uh, uh, the, the catalyst of, of the bill that was passed, and we'll, you know that law enforcement will never be documented in a manner like that again. And uh, I understand that. You um did I guess the you know the the final point it was another point that Gleason made today was mm -hmm. we found out today that the Ramsey Mitchell stop from June of 2019 was still under an active Texas Rangers investigation. You see you in that video coming in fairly late. Yeah. You run up and you, you you jump down on top of Ramsey Mitchell with a knee and and began to to take action. I guess just like this other case we're talking about, is there anything about what you did in the Ramsey Mitchell call that you would do differently today? Um, my my two strikes were de deliberate to his back to gain control of his arm. If you watch that video closely, once that happened, got control of arm, K-9 Deputy uh, uh, Charles Duvall, got the arm up, able to percuss him, it was done. Everybody starts weeding off. Um, uh, we had uh, one of the deputies here on the left side that uh, eventually got off and what happened beforehand that I wasn't a part of uh, Picked him up got him up uh, Medical saw him we got him off to the side and he was dealing his deal and I stood with him and uh, it, it was it was over um, I felt that once that I had done that p portion of, of, of my involvement in that it was over the whole because he was still actively resisting he was uh, under excited delirium. He was uh, under the influence of, of drugs or something. Uh, but uh, best of my knowledge on that, uh, in regards to what, how he was then at the time, um, I think uh, um, 
even after after the fact of the jail, I think he started to come to realize, and he was apologizing and saying, uh, I'm sorry, I, I made you guys do that. Well, it's not necessarily he made us do that. It, it, it could have gone different. But in regards to my involvement on that, um, I felt that as soon as that, that happened, it was it was done. Everybody was just off, off, off. And, uh, and if you look at it closely, um, I think I knocked the uh, deputy a couple of good times that was next to me in the face uh, harder than what uh, contact that I had with uh, with uh, Mr. Ramsey. And the whole portion of that was to gain control of his arm to effectively uh, 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 detain him. And hearing that that case is under investigation by the Rangers, are you concerned at all about being charged in that? I mean, it's a possibility. I mean, I'm not hiding from anything. It's there. I mean, it, it, it's there just like uh, with, uh, with the Leal. Uh, That's fine. Just like with with, uh, with the victim involved in the uh, in the, in the domestic that I was was was, uh, was there with, um, same difference. The, the, the video is there. Um, I'm not backing off from my involvement on that. Um, uses of forces are not going to look pretty. Um, not saying prisons that this uh, needed to look prettier or, or any of them look pretty to the extent, but um, it, it, they're just hey, skin to skin contact, physical forceful contact is always going to look bad. On, on camera, and it's always going to look and sound bad, no matter how we do it. You know, the tools that we're given, tasers and stuff like that, they're ineffective. I think it, uh, they also had tried to tase him as well too. Uh, Duvall had his uh, taser out. I don't know if he had deployed then at that point again, or was going to deploy, or couldn't deploy, um, and um, he was struggling with it with something. And so it's just one of those things that you, you, in the moment, you do what you feel that you need to do to, to take care of things. And if it comes to a point where the Rangers determine that. Uh, what I did was uh, was unlawful. Um, that is going to be up to them to continue uh, with, with, uh, with in regards to their investigation. I mean, I'm, again, I'm not trying to hide from that or deny anything other other than what what my involvement was with that. And the uh, the one other point I wanted to clear up was um, that Sheriff Gleason made was uh, Sheriff Gleason said that when they went back and reviewed the reports from the domestic violence mm -hmm. case, that he said you failed to accurately describe. The detention and that your report differed from the female deputy was that on purpose or what, what happened there? i think that i think the thing is is that being a senior deputy they want more elaboration especially when you have a trainee who had just started they you're essentially basically taking over on that to detail everything that, that needs to be detailed that they may, they might miss and how I explained it to her, hey, look, you're primary on this. Go ahead and take care of this. I put my, my part in and what I did, and then we'll go from there in regards to uh, if she needed anything further to get back with me. And we were, she was on with me all night, and we even visited after the fact. Um, and I guess that's where, the, as far as the, the elaboration of what more I could have put in there as far as everybody's involvement, uh, maybe that's what he's referring to. Um, I wrote the report to the extent in, in that manner. Um, in regards to how things played out, the key things were uh, the whole use of force portion of it. Um, there's a report that we do, or we, we did then, and it needs to be documented and taken care of. Um, and as far as uh, the, the terms, and not terms, but the, the, the bullet points and the policy in regards to what we address, if, if a use of force needs to be taken care of, those things were uh, in there and they were addressed. Uh, we asked if she was uh, uh, injured, um, of course, by us. And she's like, no, do you want EMS? No. These are things that we, I, I confirmed verbally, got a verbal confirmation from her. Um, so, and that's, those are the those are the things that I felt that were necessary in mind because of the things that I did ask ask her at that point. So you didn't omit anything trying to hide no. what really happened? No. If, could I have elaborated more on, on uh, the count of uh, Deputy Pereira? Sure. As being the, the senior deputy, yeah, that was that was a failure on my part. I could have elaborated a lot more uh, to the point where it, it, it shows, uh, it reads better and it shows better of, of everything that occurred there. And, you know, my, my final question for you would be is, you've seen the fallout over Life Heating's involvement with the Sheriff's Office under Robert Chody. You were a part of Robert Chody's administration. administration. Do you regret anything about joining that Sheriff's Office under Robert Chody? Not necessarily. Um, I regret being part of the Life PD show. Um, I think uh, I got, um, tangled up with wanting to be uh, more involved. Um, I started out initially with the lip sync battle, the national thing that started going about. Um, I was real timid. I had always been shy about doing stuff. 
and uh, then at the time my wife was uh, we were in the scare that she was possibly uh, gonna have cancer and she was going through a deal so to brighten her up and show her what I did I did that being a goofy video and made her laugh and and that's where that started the next one was a hair thing I uh, had got my hair hair buzzed uh, and then um, uh, I got my son involved in the junior deputy stuff and I just I, I saw it as getting more involved if I could take any of that back it'd be the live PD thing uh, in regards to any involvement with that um, but in regards to everything that is that has happened uh, I, I don't have any reservations because the people that some of the people that are there now were there then they're all good people they're all good people um, and it's no different than, than they would have no different this perception they would have the same thing the reservations yeah you probably should have done that or I should have been part of that they shouldn't have done that that type of thing or like should never have come come to our uh, our uh, our office one of those things maybe do you believe, in your opinion, did Live PD take the sheriff's office in a, in a bad direction? I think uh, with the direction overall, yes. Yes. Did, I mean, it did, what, was the fact that Live P was the fact that Live PD cameras were on scene through a, a lot of the uh, instances here, did the fact that those cameras show up on scene or that deputies could appear on that show, did any of that cause unnecessary uses of force or escalation that, that would not have happened had those cameras not been there? I don't necessarily believe so. Um, I think if anything it, it, it heightened our interactions with folks because they were uh, pissed off because, can I say pissed off? Sorry. Yeah, uh, they were, they would get uh, upset um, or they would get pissed off because they saw the cameras there, they didn't want to be reported. Now, granted, they didn't understand that there were things and waivers that they would have to sign after the fact. And nine times out of ten, when the producer would go up and ask the the arrestee or the folks that we dealt with, "Hey, I need you to sign this," or "Can you can you sign this um, so you're going to appear on camera?" I'm like, "No, buzz off, no." And they would, a lot of those contacts would be that. And I think that notion of that cameras in the face, and they just got to the point, of course, when they started to catch and realize what 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 the live PD was doing, and a lot that that they were with us a lot of times, but they were even deputies that didn't have anybody with them but because they had the camera they're thinking oh I'm on live PD it's not actual live PD camera or a camera so, so to speak like one of yours it's it's just a uh, the uh, body camera and they would lose it and they would just escalate the situation to the point where it's like oh you know we can't do anything whether just write it out with them or whatever it may be but um, getting back to necessarily uh, saying that uh, it, it made people want to do more than what they should I don't think so I think so okay. um. I think that is, I mean, unless there is something else I did not ask you um, that you want to say or, you know, anything you want to say to that victim. That yes. Uh, how do you want to close it out? Is it a statement you want to start out with or just? Yeah, I'll just, I'll just ask you. I mean, you, you know, the, the public seen the video again today. They saw your mug shot, mm -hmm. the charges against you. You heard the sheriff call you essentially a bad cop. Right. Is there anything you want the public to know about Lorenzo Hernandez? Yeah. Um, first and foremost, uh, send my apology to uh, the victim. Uh, regardless of her circumstances and the, the life that she lived, she was not to be subjected by my failure of professionalism to her. I failed her in my service. Uh, I think I made that very clear. Uh, overall, to the people that I worked with, then at the time that still remain at the sheriff's office and they're good folks because they're good cops here uh, and uh, that I didn't make I didn't I don't I didn't make life any easier for them then and, and probably now the public's smart enough to understand the difference and, and no um, and it's a hit or miss sometimes you know we, we may get resistance or we may not and you know, there's just there's gonna be some folks that don't like the police and we get that we understand and that's the filter that we have to always have with us and that's what I felt to have uh, to keep with me um, and uh, sending that apology to them as well too, uh, because I brought um, uh, a dis uh, disgust uh, for Williamson County law enforcement, uh, and then on a national spotlight as well too. You know, we're not only going through it here; you know, to all of Texas, all, all of our nation is going through it, and uh, I didn't help any of the situation. I accept accountability for that, because I, and I can't take that back, um, and, and I will carry that with me. Even if I'm not allowed to go to law enforcement, I will, that will always remain 
continue law enforcement, that will always remain as one of my regrets in that because, again, I've worked so hard uh, to get in this spot. Wilco was always going to be my, it was always my dream job uh, to be here. I couldn't start when I first started out in uh, the academy, but I finally got here. And then I, uh, even, you know, this very second, I, I'm just dumbfounded that, that I can't be a part of Williamson County anymore. Um, and, uh, and more so the, the, the residents of Williamson County, like I said before, you know, they're very vocal. They'll tell you how it is and they'll tell you how they feel. And uh, I felt it you know, because they had our back. And like I said, it's uh, it's one of those things that they either like you or they didn't. And there are going to be people who, again, see this interview, see this video, and will never be convinced yeah. that you aren't a bad cop. What do you say to those people, too? The only thing that would prove anything to them after the fact is either the other side of it is they see me prosecuted to the full extent of the law and they see that portion of the justice come about they're content with that or I go through and I'm allowed to come back to law enforcement and I prove myself back to this county uh, and uh, and back to the people at least in the surrounding county and back to law enforcement in general because the you know the, the uh, organizations that, that represent us as well too team PA Texas Municipal, uh, Municipal Police Association and CLE uh, you know, there too. I shame that as well. And uh, like I said, I, I can't take any of that back. You good? Yeah. You said it. All right, man. Well, thanks again for calling. Yes, sir. No, thank you. I appreciate it very All much. All right, man.